Greetings to you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yet again, this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. And as we open up, let's dedicate this moment with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace, we thank you for your mercy, we thank you for your love, we thank you for your presence, the gift of the Holy Spirit that teaches us, that shows us the things to come, that works in us both to do and to will. Even this day, Father, manifest yourself through us, reveal to us the truth you prepared for us, cause our eyes to see the things you predestinated for us to see that we might walk in them, bringing glory to your name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Last week, we, can I say, we saw the rise of the beast. We saw a beast arising from the sea. And this is a graphic picture that we have in today's chapter. We'll be taking it from the book of Revelation chapter 13. From verse 1 to verse 10. The Bible states, Then I stood on the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, his feet were like the feet of a bear, his mouth like the mouth of a lion. The dragon gave him power. His throne. And great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been mortally wounded. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth, speaking great things, and blasphemies. And he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and a nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who he kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patient and the faith of the saints. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. We saw this text last week. And we had this graphic picture of the dragon 
standing on the shore looking out into the sea and I told you from that scripture that the dragon standing on the on the seashore on the sand the sand represents kingdoms and he is Standing in the position of authority over these kingdoms. And we saw previously that the dragon is the devil or Satan. Himself. He is looking out into the sea. Now, the sea, when we look at the scriptures, we go. We're going to see that the sea represents Gentile nations. And as it looks out to the sea, a sea of waves tossed to and fro, the objective is seen from chapter 12. He has been cast down from the heaven. He has lost the battle in the heavens. He has been overcome by the saints. And we counted it now at 3-0. Now he wants to go out and wage war with the offspring of Israel or the offspring of the woman. So he's looking out for the best opportunity with which he would provide the greatest annihilation to this offspring of the woman. And how does he accomplish it? He is accomplishing this because he knows, first of all, the time is limited. So he has got to make use of the time that he has left to ensure that the, the, the blow he delivers is one of maximum impact. So how is it to accomplish this? Remember, Satan has been here from the very beginning. Now, having lost this, this battle, he wants to make sure that he wins the ultimate. And the ultimate battle here is to ensure that he sets up a kingdom on earth instead to replace the one that Jesus would set up. So he wants to come on the earth and set up a kingdom that mirrors what Jesus would have set up. So his agenda is to ensure that he sets up a kingdom that will assert, that will overcome the kingdom of God. And let's see how he works this out. Because we have a very interesting text that comes up. So it is against this background. I told you last week that John in this text says, I stood. But the older manuscripts describe it as he stood. And this is a logical progression from the 12th chapter. So here we now see the devil come up. Standing on the shore. He's looking out to the sea. He's reigning a serpent power over the kingdoms, or which are defined as the sons of the sea. Now, for those of you who need a reference for that, you have to go to Revelation chapter 20 and verse 8 to find out how this fits into what 
we are just describing. So he is coming, devising a plan of how to assert authority. He needs to get the following of the people. He needs to gain the admiration of the people. But most of all, he needs the worship of the people. So how does he go about achieving this? So in this pursuit, he raises up his eyes looking at the sea. And it is here that the Bible tells us that we see a beast coming out of the sea. Out of the many Gentile nations and peoples, we see a person coming up. And I told you last week that this beast is represented when you read this text. Twofold. It represents a person, but it also represents a kingdom. So the two are used alternately. And we see how this all adds up. As we unmask this piece. And what his agenda is. And how he will achieve this agenda. Now this is not the first time we are actually encountering this beast. In Revelation chapter 6. We saw him come. But he came as a, a rider on the white horse. Who gains control using peace tactics, using power politics, using a charismatic personality, using a persuasive language. And Using all this, he is able to bring together several nations into a form of confederation. And it is these nations that then give him authority to be able to rule and create a, a one nation, one nation confederacy that yields to him. So how does this happen? We discover, if we take it back to Daniel chapter 7, from verse 8, if you read also verse 20 to 25, we are going to discover something about what he does before. When he arises and gains the agreement of these ten kingdoms, which are represented by the ten horns. For Daniel, I mean, for we see in the revelation that when he came up, he had ten horns. Now these ten horns represent ten kingdoms. Or ten kings. So you have persons, but you also have kingdoms. But when you cross that with Daniel 7, you're going to discover that of the ten, three of them we rebel against him. And he is going to use force and subdue them and create a lesson for everyone. And he now becomes the undeniable ruler of all these ten of the ten kingdoms that conglomerate together and give authority 
to this one leader whom we see as the beast. Three of them rebel. And then what the leader does, he exercises authority and crushes this rebellion. He then becomes the undeniable ruler of these ten kingdoms. Now, if we cross reference that with Ezekiel chapter 38. Scholars believe that something is going to happen. That during this time there is going to come an invasion from the king of the north. And this will possibly involve all the Arab nations. Plus the communist state. And they are going to come against Israel. If you read Ezekiel chapter 38, from verse 1 to verse 9, you're going to find that when these armies come, verse 21 to 23 tells us that there is going to be an intervention from God. And there is going to be an intervention from God. These armies are going to be overcome. And once they overcome, it is going to be such an annihilation that the Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 39 from verse 11 to verse 15 that it is going to require seven months to bury their corpses. And their weapons are going to be used to supply fuel for Israel for a period of seven years. Why is this important? Because this battle then prepares a vacuum. And it is this political vacuum that then the beast utilizes to be able to entrench himself as the one world ruler. He uses this version of the powers from the east being defeated to then come through one as the solution to the Israeli-Arab conflict. Then secondly, he comes through as the possibility of peace that humanity is longing for. So using his charismatic personality, he then assumes to the throne. But I want you to see something here. The book of Revelation says that when he came out, he was given power by the dragon. So everything that is happening, he is not getting it of his own. The beast is receiving power and authority. And this is being given to him by Satan. Himself. So behind the scenes, the Bible then unveils to us where all this authority is coming from. But I want us to take a step. But I want us to take a step. But I want us to take a step. But I want us to take a skin of But I want us to take a skin of But in a But in a But in a But in a But